The 80s was the greatest time for action movies. From Die Hard to Predator to The Terminator, Robocop, Rambo, Lethal Weapon, just a barrage of classic, awesome action movies. Lately, we've gotten a lot of comic book movies, and that's kind of filled in the gap for the action movies that we've been lacking. We do get some every now and then, but usually they end up being either watered down, or there's just something missing. They're just not particularly good. Don't misunderstand me. I love the comic book movies. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying that there's something about that old school, one guy or one cop takes on a legion of bad guys. A couple years ago, I saw Olympus Has Fallen, and I was blown away. It felt very much like the old-school badass action movies that I'd been missing. You had Gerard Butler playing just a scenery-chewing, one-line-slinging, awesome hero. And aside from some sketchy CGI, I had no problem with it. I thought it was a ton of fun. When I heard they were making a sequel, I got excited because I thought this was a great starting point for a new franchise. You had a very likable lead and a lot of other very good actors and actresses filling in the rest of the movie. Morgan Freeman, Angela Bassett, Aaron Eckhart, Rada Mitchell, a lot of actors who I really like. I was a little bit worried because this was supposed to be released, I believe it originally had a date of November, but it got pushed back to March. And uh, I was kind of worried that uh, maybe they were trying to edit it down to PG-13. All I know is they didn't release it in January, thankfully, because that is the notorious dump month where a uh, studio just has very little faith in it. Within 10 minutes of the film, my worries were gone. I was immediately loving it. They brought back a lot of what I liked about Olympus Has Fallen, and that is the camaraderie between Aaron Eckhart and Gerard Butler. You got Aaron Eckhart, who's playing the president, the straight man, and you've got Gerard Butler, who's playing the completely loyal, 100% badass Secret Service agent who's assigned to protect the president. And they're friends, but as soon as the shit hits the fan, serious mode goes on, and he becomes a ruthless killing machine. Uh, The plot is essentially, there was a bombing run on a terrorist, and instead of killing the bad guy, they ended up killing his family. And the terrorists organized this strike in London, where all the leaders of the free world are meeting for a funeral. The terrorists end up killing a whole bunch of people, but the number one target of theirs is the President of the United States. So Gerard Butler and him, they escape into the underground of London, they're trying to get away, and the terrorists manage to take over London. They've been impersonating soldiers and guards and police and so nobody knows who's good and who's bad and okay yeah it's ridiculous but it's an action movie i'm not going into these kind of movies expecting realism i want escapism i want shit to blow up i want to have fun and this was a lot of fun Gerard Butler was over the top in Olympus Has Fallen, and he was even more over the top here, which made me absolutely love the guy, because after just seeing him in Gods of Egypt, and how it felt like he was just phoning in that performance, uh, I am set, uh, God of Darkness, uh, and in this, he's slinging one-liners, and beating the piss out of people, and cracking jokes I don't even want to say, I just, you know, because I don't want to spoil them, because they're funny, they're great. Uh, The interaction between him and Aaron Eckhart was a lot more developed because they had a lot more time together. In the first one, they had a little bit of interaction and then they were separated. In this, the two of them were working together to try to get out of there. That was another thing that I liked about this, why this feels more like they're setting up a franchise. The characters had a lot more depth and interaction with each other. They didn't jump right into the action sequences. They went over a little bit of a refresher of the last movie. Not so much um, what happened, just you got reintroduced to their characters and you saw a little bit of their personal lives and that made it better so that when things started going wrong you felt bad they weren't just cannon fodder and that's one of the problems that i have with a lot of more modern action movies they don't spend time to get to know any of the characters except for maybe like the main character everything else that's just oh here's all these other side people oh, they're gonna die don't worry about them uh this it felt like you got to know uh what was going on in their personal lives and you know i mean they didn't spend an overtly ridiculous amount of time on it it's hey here's what's going on with this and okay now action 
my only gripe with the movie, and this is the same gripe that I had with the first movie, is that they use CGI blood splatters instead of squibs. They didn't do it all the time, though. There was actually a couple of headshots where it either was a squib or they did a great job with the CGI on that part. But for most of them, there was that splat where you could just tell that it wasn't real. My other grape, and again, like the first movie, there were a couple of the big set pieces where you absolutely could tell that it was CG. I love the introduction to some new characters. Uh, being that they were in London, they now introduced MI6. The whole thing gelled. It just worked. It was a well-told action movie. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's a tracking shot in the movie that is awesome. I love tracking shots. And this one, uh, there, Gerard Butler and some of the MI6 were on a raid. And they're attacking the terrorists. And they're going back and forth. And there's bullets and explosions. And they're following the gunfire. I haven't seen a tracking shot like that since Children of Men. It might not have been as elaborate as the one from Children of Men. That one is just god-tier tracking shot. But this one was completely on expected it's early in the year and i know there's a lot of other movies that i'm going to want to see uh, batman superman warcraft civil war but as of currently london has fallen is now my second favorite movie of the year after deadpool if you miss the old school one-man army action movies like commando absolutely positively go see london has fallen this movie kicked so much ass